Don Yeager fact. You barely scratch the surface in that book under the tarnished dome. The only thing separating you from Woodward and Bernstein, <laughs> yeah, Jaeger status, is the following. Fact, not fiction. Stevia in massive doses cures the human body in blazing speed, Don. Yeah, you talked with my mom before. Should call her. The Stevie discovery brought a stage four cat back into perfect health, brother. It vanished six breast tumors and 62 pounds from my uncle in four months. No, that's not cocaine, Don. That's actually Stevia. It's legal. It actually kicks the shit out of cocaine. Yeah, even that. That's the same quality right there that they have at Trader Joe's and at ZNaturalFoods.com. I'll tell you what. You know how they say speed kills, Don Yeager? Well, Jaja, that comes fairly close to methamphetamine, all right? I mean, close enough, and it's cheap enough where it's a viable replacement. Fact, not fiction. You can snort that, get fucking power surge for an hour and a half. You can smoke it, and I can get the same sex fucking on the brain smoking meth feeling that was very very popular okay smoked a lot of meth and uh yeah stevia it naturally fucking mimics replaces that that's a huge one think about the implications just about that if what i'm saying is correct and about the six breast tumors in my uncle vanishing and 62 pounds vanishing in four months and link Don Yeager's name to that fucking getting global. Do you realize the adulation that you're going to get? Not to mention probably royalties, man. Okay? Fact, not fiction. Don Yeager. How does... What the fuck is a natural, huh? Okay. How does Dan Quinn get fired for making a Lawrence Taylor type stop? Fact, fourth and inches on the goal line, man. Everybody in the stadium knows they're going up the middle, Don. And last second call from Holtz overriding Fazio's original call, a passive blitz. Make sure there was nothing to the outside and then crash the party if I had a chance. And I was ordered to stay home and look for a sweep, Don. That's a huge story, okay? Lou Holtz fucking trying to throw games. Fact. Don, if you see John Foley's name on the defensive starting roster versus Texas A&M in the Cotton Bowl, that proves Lou Holtz was throwing that game. John was outmatched. Uh, not a well. Anyway, just leave it at that. Fact, not fiction. And fact, Don, that kid right there, heard Digger Phelps talking with Jerry Faust's lieutenant commanders about setting Jerry Faust up to lose at Notre Dame. And, you know, that six degrees of separation game. Fact, not fiction. If Jerry Faust is the coach, I'm a weapon of mass fucking destruction, dog. Straight up, I've got jets, okay? I can cover black guys man to man. If Jerry was the coach, I would have been on a kickoff team and Ned Bolkar was the first one down as it was. I blew doors on Ned. I would have been fucking step for step or beating the outside brothers. Everybody in America would have known who the fuck I was. Fact, not fiction. That kid, <laughs> that kid had a chance, you know, to continue playing football if he walks on to like the Raiders or to pursue boxing. In fact, Don Lou Holtz is a rapist in a non-sexual manner. He kept Tony Rice from the NFL. Seriously. Is this a, did you put this in your book, Under the Tarnished Dome? Fucking Lou Holtz losing his mind and attacking his starting quarterback twice. The first time, Tony was shocked. Holtz tackled him, fucking screaming, 15 seconds, and then he wakes up. Second time, Tony bends over at the waist. Holtz hangs like a koala bear, literally out of his mind, pissed, yelling for about 10 seconds before he realizes the position he's in. And... 
he treated like Tony Rice like he was a fucking uh, slave dog straight up if <laughs> he ruined that kid he kept Tony from an NFL career and Marty Lippicott I mean I said this before Don in other videos but the fact is Lou Holtz kept Marty out the field except when he wanted to win versus USC so he throws Lippicott in when the Trojans get a first and goal right and Marty stops him fucking Lip was a man child there's game film of him in high school manhandling fucking Tony Siragusa dog that's part of the fucking uh, enticement package that Jerry Faust dangled in front of me. He said, if I come to Notre Dame, I'm going to room with Lippincott, and we're going to form the fucking nucleus for the best defense to ever touch the field. In fact, Don, do you think it makes a book in and of itself? Lou Holtz being blessed with so much talent at Notre Dame that he can actually kick me off the team and switch the defense around, you know, not putting Marty on the field. And yeah, I mean, he could have had the best defense ever, and he still wins the Fiesta Bowl. All right? Uh, Lippincott at nose tackle, his, I mean, he was better than Chris Orch, who was decent. He was young. Holtz forced him in there. Yeah. Lippett nose tackle. Dan Quinn at drop end. Okay? The same kid who sacked the quarterback 6.5 times in the 86 spring game. So, can you imagine Don Yeager, Cedric Figaro, an LT type linebacker at Russian, all right, attacking the quarterback and he can cover running backs. I don't know if he can do it man for man, but he's good in coverage, all right. And Dan Quinn shutting Alan Pickett down man for man because he has jets. And then him sometimes attacking the quarterback from the other side. It would have been complete fucking mayhem, dog. Fact, not fiction. The scout team defense. The last scrimmage before the Texas A&M game. All right, subpoena that if you have it. The scout defense took the fuck over. Isn't that right, Lou? We kicked the shit out of you. We were annihilating you guys. You had to give them like five first downs inside the five yard line for them to even get a fucking touchdown. All right, we uh, uh, yeah. In fact, before that scrimmage. Flo's Fazio comes up to me and he goes, it's not me that's holding you back. Go out there and wreck them, okay? And then he slaps me on the ass in a non-gay way. And uh, we did. And there's a story there, man. Fact, not fiction, Don. If it's not for Lou Holtz, everybody in America knows who the fuck Dan Quinn is. Fact. Uh, subpoena. I mean, they keep fucking film forever there, you know? And they filmed every practice. You know, me shutting Alan Pickett down. Fucking ask him. You know enough guys in the NFL. Ask him, Alan Pickett, did I or did I not shut you down to where you couldn't catch a pass, you couldn't break it open? And Alonzo Jefferson, your second stringer, okay? Him talking shit that, yeah, you know what? Uh, fucking, he's playing in front of you when the only way that AJ can get open is if he fucking juked me and picked a side like 35, 40 yards down the field. He could not run me. I was faster than he was, okay? Easily kept stride. But, you know what? I mean, sooner or later, you're going to pick a right side, dog. I've already passed him off to the secondary in the NFL. Fact, not fiction. If it's not for Lou Holtz, I'm not turning my back on football, Don Yeager. In fact, dog, how many guys that didn't make it to the NFL are talked 10 plus years about, I mean, my cousins, Don Yeager, they went to San Diego High School 10 fucking years after I left. In fact, not fiction. Ask Andy and David Riva if they, in fact, came up in the social status. Oh my God, you're Danny Quinn's fucking cousins? They were still telling war stories about me, Don Yeager. Straight up. For every kid across America that's played football in high school and hates that monstrous asshole fucking coach, show a movie, okay? The truth. Fucking Mike Carts and I get in an argument on the field. It was Thursday night before our Friday game. We played Lincoln San Diego, Don Yeager. That's when I had to play. I smashed Steve Taylor in the mouth. In the middle of the field, man, on a blitz. I thought I was going to fucking knock him out. He was knocked three yards back. I guess they heard the collision across the street and talked about it 10 plus years 
after the fact. And when Steve Taylor hit the sidelines and turned it up, he had to stop as I sailed by it like a fucking cruise missile. I wanted to launch him into the fucking stands to make a point, dog. And, and that was number two tackle that I missed. In fact, Don Yeager, Coach John Cannon, my position coach, a very angry, mean, monstrous, motherfucking piece of shit, he denigrated my ability to play linebacker and said I should probably think about offensive tackle, all right? One of the reasons, okay, that I quit the game as soon as I hit the sideline for getting fired for making this play, Don. And seriously, if what I'm saying is true, and that call right there is from a punk that says he knows Cal Worsham and this guy is going to kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, typical. Uh, someone besides who should be the mayor of Scandal Minto doing it himself. Anyhow, <laughs> anywho, Don Yeager. Fuck this punk. Um, yeah, fact, not fiction. Stevia actually does cure incinerates fat from the human body in blazing speed this is a fact okay that man should be exonerated okay he was a saint he was a good man all right which is very very rare among coaches and he was set up to lose don i heard digger phelps talking about it straight up get a reality tv show don yeager and get digger phelps on there you know what i'm saying i mean did I forget to tell you about this? You know, I was in shock getting kicked out for an attempted rape that the priests of my hall's testimony proved I didn't do, Don Yeager. Seriously, the same group of girls, Don Yeager, who the year before had said that I fucking punched Patty Noble like a man and point of impact doorway of bathroom, uh, it sent her flying 17 feet down the fucking hall and she slams into the wall slumps to the floor knocked out and it's like is there any pictures you know bruising well there was slight swelling kind of like from a bitch slap suzanne michelle roy talked to her don you know her testimony was i was taking a piss and i got attacked and i defended myself so they kicked me out for two semesters all right after they've set Jerry Faust up to lose, okay, he's gone. Otherwise, he likes me and he's playing me. But Lou Holtz, Don Yeager, is a member of the Old Boys Coaching Network. And because of the way that I left USC, all right, not my fault, Russ Purnell, motherfucker. All you had to do was get me a job and I'm at USC, Don Yeager. Seriously, so, Don Yeager, question. Fact, not fiction. If I'm a Trojan and I'm making that play, where do you think I am? If I can cover Alan Pickett man for man, shut him down because I have Jets and I'm at USC, do you think there's a chance that I might be nominated? If not, an SB nomination, all right, probably winner. I mean, that comes close, I'm thinking. But maybe even a Buckus Award. What do you think, Don Yeager? Fact, six degrees of separation, Lou Holtz is, in a way, responsible for the death of millions, all right? If I don't get fired for this play, Jack Ham, if there isn't a gag order, Jack Ham, a, a code of silence, all right? Jack Ham, did you know about Jerry Sandusky when you were at Penn State? And if you did... When you were a pro, why didn't you do something about it? Seriously, it's like this, Jack Ham. When you saw me make this play that you didn't have the DNA to even contemplate, Jack Ham, and you didn't mention my name, I'm selling, <laughs> dude, I'm saying linebacker to linebacker, you sold me the fuck out, punk, straight up. And I would say that to your fucking face. And you know what? Yeah, you're kind of an old guy. Uh, Stevia up, and in about a year, you might have a fucking chance. Don Yeager, fact, not fiction. If you drink Stevia lemonade all day, you will be lean and ripped two, three months. 
You will help me win a Nobel Prize and you will attain the status of a Woodward and Bernstein for literally saving hundreds of millions of lives around the planet, bringing a health utopia, okay? Yeah, that's what Stevia does. And let's see. If you have a female in your life, you should play the violin, Don Yeager. I think upgrading the Kama Sutra and taking women to what they say is like the fountain of orgasm, one to two orgasms per minute for even hours. Think about the implications of helping me get that famous. Women will metaphorically love you forever. Peace out, my mega.